Good morning. I can see. Oh, there we go. That's good. Good morning, everybody. Rainy, rainy day here in Michigan. But I hear it's supposed to get cold again. I'm ready for spring. I see people coming on. Good morning. Say hey. I can see numbers. I can't see faces yet. It's the weirdest thing. Vicki. Good morning, Vicki. Yay. Oh, there's more. Who else is on? Good morning, Cindy. That doesn't look like your profile picture. Good morning, good morning. Oh, there's more. Um, just a quick update on Brian. His appointment went extremely well yesterday. They took the drain out, which we are both very happy about. Um, I said you can do your own shower now. Um, hi, Kirsten. Um, so that was good. The stitches have to remain in because it's such a big wound. Um, so we'll go back in a week, but they said he's doing great. He's doing great, Sue. Um, got the drain out and just waiting for that to heal. And next week will be stitches. But he drove home yesterday, which he was very happy about. I think the most trying time of this whole thing for him has been having me drive him around, which I don't know why I think I'm a great driver. Um, I think he's shocked at how many times my hands are not on the steering wheel as I'm navigating my coffee and switching hands and stuff. But I think I do just fine. So he was happy to drive home yesterday. So that was good. And he's actually going out and taking our daughter. It's my Sarah Grace's 21st birthday today on 2 22 um, She's the one that I testified about how she was the fulfillment of um, the promise after losing two babies at 17 weeks. And the Lord said, you will have another child. And Sarah Grace is that child. So that's very, very cool. We're celebrating Sarah Grace today. She came in. So when she, she's just this petite little thing. And when she was little, she would just wake up and just rub her eyes and yawn. And her hair would all be a mess. Um, and she came in this morning just rubbing her eyes, <laughs> yawning. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Just like when you were a baby. And she's 21 and had her nurse's outfit on before she left. So, yes. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Yes, yeah, Sue, it's a man thing. It's a man thing. I I don't complain when he drives, so. All right, so this morning, um, I was so distracted in my quiet time, and I don't know why I hate when it's like that. And so finally, I just kind of like paused and said, all right, Lord, where do I read today? And I heard Matthew 11. So I went to Matthew 11, and I read the whole chapter because I wanted to go to the end of it. It talks about, come to me, all who are heavy laden. But I know to read the whole thing. And sure enough, um, in verse 12, it says, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. And that kind of popped to me as well as um, 28 and 29 that said, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. So I don't claim to know, you know, everything that these verses mean, especially verse 12, but this is how he spoke to me about it today. Um, so as I began to study out about the kingdom of heaven suffering violence and the violent take it by force, I started to look up the words um, in the Greek to kind of get a better understanding. Um, and it says, the so the word suffers there, so the kingdom suffers violence, it means to use force or to apply force. Um, and the violent take it by force is there to carry it off and claim it for themselves. And so I was reading some commentaries, and so some of the notes were, men who are violent or use force. The violent men of eager zeal who grasped the kingdom of heaven, i.e. our pardon, blessedness, forgiveness, with as much eagerness as men who would snatch and carry off their own spoil of a conquered city. Take it by force, but they, they grabbed it or grasped it for themselves. Another quote was, these are not lazy wishes or cold endeavors that will bring men to heaven. Um, the eager, enth enthusiastic seas of the kingdom to win the prize of war, okay? And so I'm like, yeah, okay, I see that, God. I, I see this apathetic, lazy um, idea of Christianity isn't going to fly. And so this is what he spoke to me. 
And so when I when he mentions carnal Christianity, carnal Christianity does not to me just mean sin, like living in sin. It's it's unbelief. Well, I guess which is sin, apathy, um, living by our feelings instead of faith. Okay. Um, or living for ourselves and our own ideas. So to me, that's what a carnal Christian is. Um, so he says, you must step out of carnal Christianity, living by feelings and your own desires and thoughts. I say, be sober, be alert. You must make the most of every opportunity. Kingdom living is not floating down a river on the inner tube, allowing life to happen. A que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be, and calling it sovereignty. Believing whatever happens must be the will of God for your life. That is ignorance of what sovereignty means. I do not control every detail of your life. Is my hand upon your life? Yes. But here on earth, there's a spiritual battle. Kingdom living is an upstream swim, not a floating down the river. My will is not automatically done on earth. If so, all would be saved. All would be healed. All would be set free. You are learning the ways of the kingdom. Um, passive, lazy, distracted, apathetic, under the guise of my sovereignty does not fly in the kingdom. In other words, it's not an, it's not an excuse. Well, you know, it's just God's sovereignty. Um, notice I speak of the violent, take it by force, but also how to find true rest in me. When you learn to fully to battle from a place of victory, from a place of being yoked with me, you will find that rest for your soul. Rest is not inactivity. Nor is the answer fighting in your own strength, fighting from fear and panic. <clears throat> this rest is a place of being yoked with me, knowing who I am, who you are, and the power and authority that you wield because of your union with me. Ask me to teach you. Learn of me, and you will war from rest. Okay, so that's what he spoke to my heart. And so then I thought of, you know, those who know their God will do great exploits, right? So like if we're not seeing a lot of great exploits in our life, it's because of our lack of knowledge of God, okay? Um, I think when we know all that is ours, you know, all that he paid for on the cross, all that his blood was poured out for, that we'll find rest for our souls and we will also walk in an uncommon victory. And so as we read through the Bible, especially the New Testament, um, we shouldn't gloss over all the things that we're like, yeah, well, I don't see that in my life or I don't see that in my life that it should cause us to pause and say, all right, Lord, here's the fruit of the spirit. Like I'm not seeing that in my life. I'm not seeing patience or kind, whatever it is or compassion, um, or the victory, you know, how we're overcoming victors. Like I'm not seeing the victory in my life or if, if I see bondage and just constant struggle, um, in my life, what am I missing? What don't I understand? And we've talked about it. Absolutely, there's going to be persecutions and struggles and all those things. I'm not saying that our life is always going to be just this, you know, cakewalk. But we are to have victory over them. We talk about that a lot. And so, um, like I said, anything that I see in the Word that doesn't, you know, my life doesn't line up with it, I need to stop and ask Him, Lord, what is this? Why is this not in my life? And um, I just want to kind of give a warning because probably a couple years ago, or more, this kind of message would have sent me off into works and self-effort. Um, and I, I would have been buried by it. Like, I don't see any victory in my life and I don't know how to have victory. You know, I would have been buried and I would have tried to figure it out on my own. And that's, I don't want to do that with this message, okay? I don't want us to look at our lives and see what a hot mess it is and then be buried. I want us to look at the Word of God and see if we're seeing those things in our lives. And if not, to seek Him for it. And the things that we don't see, the victory that we don't see, I want us to rise up and fight for it, to not just let life happen to us, to actually fight for what he's paid for. I keep hearing, um, may the lamb receive the reward of his suffering. Like he suffered for so much for us to, to well, not only eternal life, but to live here um, on earth. And I, I don't want it to be a waste. I want him to, when he sees me, when I go to heaven, I want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. You lived life to the full, right? So I want to pray for us that um, he would create this hunger in us and he would open our eyes to this. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can come to you and that you teach us, Lord. 
And Father, I pray that you would create such a hunger, Lord, a holy hunger for true kingdom living. <clears throat> Reveal to us, Lord, what that means. Like, I feel like I'm just learning what it means, um, true kingdom li living and what it means, you know, to take the kingdom by force. Lord, would you teach us? Would you show us any areas, Lord, where we have been lazy and apathetic and just kind of, you know, making an excuse for our lives like, oh, well, that's just, you know, God's sovereignty. Instead of rising to the invitation to take back what the enemy has stolen, rise and to take the kingdom by force, Lord. There are people who need to know Jesus. There are people who need to be set free. So, Father, we say here we are. Teach us. Teach us, Lord, how to take the kingdom by force but also how to rest in you and to do it from a place of rest in you. We take your yoke upon us, Lord, and we want to learn. So teach us, Father. We thank you for Jesus, and we thank you for all that he paid for, Lord. Yes, Lord. May he receive the reward of his suffering in our lives, Lord. Open our eyes to know you more, Lord. If ever there was a time for God's people to do great exploits, it is now. We say, here we are, Lord. Open our eyes to know you more. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, ladies, there you go. Have a wonderful day, and um, I will see you Thursday.